Hello everyone and welcome to this video which is in our human game series. I'm Grandmaster Matthew Sadler and we are taking a look at a quite stunning game played between Laman Hajieva and Jemal Ovesdudieva in the 12th Sharjah Women's Cup. Um, I was having a look at the tournament in uh, Chess 24 and uh, um, I noticed that the leader uh, Jumal Ovesdudieva was on six out of six, so uh, I thought, oh, I'll have a look at, uh, at the seventh round. And it turned out to be an absolute stunner. I really love the game. And uh, looking at it with the engines, uh, just found more and more interesting details. So, uh, yeah, spent a, a lovely time uh, analysing it myself first without an engine, then just uh, checking the conclusions and, uh, yeah, just a, a really lovely game. So let's get into it. It was a C3 Sicilian. Um, Hayeva was white and Ovesdudieva, the leader, was black. C5, C3, D5, takes, takes. D4, knight, F6. So this um, 2D5 system against the um, uh, the Alapin, um, a major system. Um, I've always tended to play uh, knight, F6. Um, I always found that, um, that this... Um, gave black, I felt, more winning chances than uh, than d5. I felt there were a lot of lines where uh, white could play um, uh, d4 and then d takes c5 and either exchange off queens or get some sort of three against two majority on the queen side, which, um, well, if you look at the games of uh, really good Alapin players like uh, Sergei Tavyakov, then, uh, well, he sometimes makes those positions look like force wins. But um, here... Um, black had no fear of that, and white played it uh, reasonably sharply, playing uh, knight bd2. Um, d takes c5 is indeed Stockfish's favourite line. Um, although, to be honest, this um, this ending, um, you know, rather than taking off that pawn on c5, just playing the ending um, worked out pretty well for Dragon against Stockfish. You know, this was just uh, um, kind of a nice position where black had uh, good compensation for the pawn. Um, but knight bd2 was played. And now knight c6. Uh, the engines uh, preferred uh, e6, which is uh, slightly calmer. Um, I kind of wonder why, actually. Um, bishop c4, queen c6, takes, takes, cd, queen d4, bishop d5, queen c7 was the uh, um, was the engine line. And yeah, you know, maybe for an engine this is equal. But um, as I said, you know, in the games of uh, Sergei Tivyakov, you see uh, these types of positions where white's got the... Um, the two bishops and um, and this uh, three against um, uh, two majority and uh, yeah you know he often makes uh, an awful lot of these positions yeah the engines hold it well but uh, I think for human players it's um, easier for white to play than for uh, for black so I quite like what uh, black did in this position played the uh, aggressive move knight c6 and now uh, d takes c5 and uh, yeah this is the sharpest line and uh, definitely what uh, what white should do and now e5 from black bishop c4 queen d7 and uh, um, yeah I mean I really like this system for black I mean black's already uh, got threats in the air I mean e5 to e4 obviously and uh, there's also the possibility of just castling queenside so uh, yeah I mean you know as a Sicilian player you know for most of my professional career trying to find um, interesting ideas against the Alapin, trying to keep some life in the position and uh, and keep it a fighting game. You know, that was something I spent uh, almost more time than, than analysing the Nidorf I really wanted to play. So, um, yeah, always very impressed where after eight moves, you've already got a super sharp position. Now, white played a um, uh, move that had um, been played a number of times before, Queen E2. Um, actually, it should transpose into what the engines wanted, really, which was to play... Um, h3 bishop h5 and now g4 bishop g6 queen e2 so we'll have a look at that line just to see uh, how it is the, the engines preferred a slightly different move order but i don't think it makes any material difference although i think you know queen e2 might give black a, a few extra little possibilities but possibly not very good ones castles um and now this was a, a key moment in the game actually um white uh, thought for quite a while and played the move queen e3 um, which is an interesting idea. I mean, it gets out of uh, this pin and it defends the pawn on c5. But, you know, obviously moving the queen again in this position when, um, uh, yeah, you know, the, the center's not really closed. You know, lots of possibilities to open it. it you know, it's obviously going to be a really dangerous move. Um, my engines wanted to play h3, um, bishop h5. I was looking at all sorts of ideas like playing e4 as sacrifices, you know, either... Um, here or um, or on this move as well, but 
yeah, I mean, it was all right, but the engines weren't uh, amazingly keen. Bishop g6, um, and now um, bishop b5 was uh, was one idea of high arcs. Um, I was letting high arcs, uh, the high arcs engine, have a little go at this. Um, yeah, this was one of the uh, uh, amazing things it came up with. Very, very sharp, but um, um, in the end, this turned out pretty well for um, for uh, for black. Um, actually, just ending a, a piece up there. Um, and um, um, what uh, my engines wanted to play was instead of this move, uh, bishop b5, which was a, a little bit too aggressive, just wanted to play the move knight b3, defending the pawn on c5. And after h5, playing g5. Uh, this would be the novelty. Knight g5 was played in a human game before, but uh, I mean, simply taking all the pawns looks, <laughs> you know, looks looks very good for um, uh, for uh, for black somehow. So uh, don't want to do that. But yeah, g5, knight d5, knight h4, and uh, well, the engines were, were kind of uh, thinking that white had a slight advantage here, though, you know, it's a very, very murky position. I mean, you know, like uh, a pawn on g5 looks a bit like a grob. You've got um, a pawn that you've grabbed, grabbed on c5, you know, white's a pawn up, but it's supported by a knight on b3, so you don't get all those lovely um, uh, queenside pushes. And, uh, yeah, I mean, there are a lot of squares, uh, you know, um, that are open to black's pieces. I mean, in general, I would prefer black in this position, but the engines seem to think that this was quite okay for white. Bishop c2 is an interesting move there, just wasting a tempo to stop white from castling queenside. I really like that. Um, bishop b3, bishop b4, a lot of toing and froing with the bishop, um, queen e8 and bishop e7 and uh, well i mean actually the characteristics of the position haven't changed that much black's got the two bishops for uh, a bit of compensation and lots of weak points in the in the white position to uh, you know to to aim for but white is a pawn up with a bit of a space advantage and uh, for the engines this was turning out to be uh, you know just uh, equality basically but very murky as you can see and uh, but you know from the black point of view you know i'd be really very happy to uh, to get this from a from a c3 sicilian but after queen e3, actually white's in uh, in serious trouble already. So e4 played, and um, actually it's already time for white to think about bailing out with a move like knight d4. <coughs> uh, we go bishop takes c5, knight b3, bishop b6, and castles. Um, you know, we're willing to give up a pawn on d4 just to get the two bishops, uh, if ever that happens. And after knight e5, bishop b5, h3, takes, takes. You know, black's just a little bit better here, really. I mean, we've got a, a great square on d3 for the knight. We've got a bit more space, and, you know, white's development is uh, lagging a little bit. But still survival for for, uh, for white. And, uh, you know, both Stockfish and Dragon were holding this as white. Um, after the next move, knight g5, which is really, really risky. Um, actually, the engines think that, uh, that black should be winning already. You know, it's uh, always a bit extreme uh, how the engines think, but, yeah, you can understand uh, why. And actually, uh, in this position, um, um, uh, Jamal played um, uh, a move that I was expecting. That was the, uh, the move I wanted. Um, but actually, the engines find something uh, completely unexpected, actually. Um, it's this move, Queen f5, um, with the idea of simply of taking the, uh, the pawn on c5. And if you go b4, well, we play knight e5 now. And, I mean, we've got threats like knight d3, even rook d3 at uh, times, so white castle's out of the way. But now we've got this idea, rook takes d2, queen takes d2, knight c4. And uh, black's picked up two pieces for the rook. Um, you know, there's a pawn, but, uh, well, basically after queen d4, queen d5, rook e1, takes, takes, and bishop e7. Stockfish thought that black was clearly better, you know, that's something like... Um, uh, plus, you know, minus one for uh, for white. It's not clear to me at all, I have to say. You know, I mean, uh, um, f3, bishop h5, fe was played. And, you know, I, I, if you ask me to assess this just off the bat, I'd say, uh, oh, well, surely, um, um, you know, white is uh, is better here with these uh, huge pawns here. You know, it's quite big. A uh, big problem is that this knight on c4 kind of stops this uh, this bishop on c1 from getting developed and these pawns are actually attackable you can advance them but well with uh, with these two bishops uh, we're going to be able to attack them and um, yeah I mean actually Stockfish just draws the uh, the pawns forward uh, attacks them and uh, and then starts um, uh, uh, yeah winning some 
yeah i mean as i <clears throat> as i said you know i, I i'm uh, i can't give you uh, any real explanation as to why there should be so much better for black simply it just uh, seems that um uh, uh with the two bishops um black is able to uh, attack all those pawns and gradually whittle down the uh, the white position um but it took a very very long time and uh, you know stockfish won in 103 moves here so um you know that would be the engine preference um already um yeah looks very it looks strong but um certainly not trivial at all and uh you know um i certainly wouldn't guess during a game that uh, that this would be um you know the, the best path to a to a clear advantage for uh, for black um <clears throat> there are other moves as well knight e5 is not bad but knight d5 i liked very very much here and now this is where, uh, you know, it just got to be a joy analysing with the engines. Also analysing, you know, uh, by myself, uh, first of all. I uh, had a couple of days off work, actually, this week. So, uh, you know, then uh, you've got the time just to ha take a chessboard and, uh, and work stuff out by yourself and then see where you went wrong after. So, you know, knight d5 is a nice move because after queen e4, um, we go rook e8 and uh, pin. Um, in the game, white played bishop takes d5, um, which looked pretty natural. But um, Queen G3 was um, was very interesting, and uh, um, yeah, I mean, I, I sort of needed my engines to um, uh, to sort of uh, give me a bit of confidence to look at this move because, uh, to be honest, after F5, um, this looks pretty horrific for uh, um, for uh, for White, you know, because uh, F4 is coming in. But it seems that, um, uh, well, there's all sorts of tactics in the position, and uh, White seems to be able to. Uh, to hold uh, its own actually so it looks like queen g3 like knight d5 was kind of an error and queen g3 was better let's have a look at uh, a few of the ideas the first thing that you've got to understand in this position is there's a, a very common trick that we're going to see many times during the game and uh, it's taking with a knight on e4 now why does that work um the point is f takes e4 we go bishop d5 and this bishop on g4 is hanging so after queen d5 we've got queen takes g4 check so always got to watch out in virtually every position to see whether this is possible or not now after knight e4 actually we can just go queen e6 which was my idea and the engines agree um yeah bishop h5 is also quite a a very strong move as well but the idea of queen e6 is that i'm taking and now my rook can take back on d5 so bishop g4 is uh, is protected and this just wins a piece basically so um you know that's pretty good um, knight d takes e4 it's one of those moves that you say okay well yeah that's possible too i mean it's the same trick um obviously um but obviously this is not going to work because you know there's some sort of mate on d1 and you sort of say okay you know one minute and i'll find it um and actually yeah <laughs> you know it, it rapidly got to be half an hour because i couldn't you know I, I was thinking there must be a clear win here but there doesn't seem to be um, the reason for it, um, well, you know, knight takes c3 is the ultimate obvious way to do it. I mean, you're opening up uh, this line, the queen on d1, uh, and the big idea is that if you try and ignore it, then I take on e4 like this, get rid of all your attacking pieces, and I'm just a, a piece up. So that's the big idea. Only what I'd spotted, um, actually I spotted a couple of things. Um, the one thing that I was really proud of myself for spotting um, was this move bishop e6. So, um, and again, um, remember this trick because uh, with the knight on g5, um, bishop e6, and black having played f5 especially, when the bishop is no longer covering the uh, e6 square, um, bishop e6 is a huge trick for, uh, for white. A big defense in all sorts of lines. Um, but the point is, you know, it looks like you can just play queen takes e6 here. Brilliant! And after knight e6, we go rook d1 check. However, I had spotted the absolutely gorgeous queen c7 check that's the one uh king c7 knight takes c6 king e8 and then knight takes d8 and the um uh the amazing point about it is that um obviously if you take with a knight i just take like this and white's just winning material up and uh, the even more cunning part is after takes i take here and if uh, b takes c6 i go f3 at the end and fork these two guys i mean absolutely amazing um, in actual fact, the engines point out that after takes, takes and rookie eight, black actually stands a, a little bit better. I mean, two bishops and a pawn and very active as well. But, you know, white should be able to survive. But I mean, this queen c7 idea, I was very proud of myself for, uh, for spotting that. Um, I also spotted, actually, I couldn't find anything wrong with knight d6, takes, queen takes. 
and that does actually seem to be true as well because uh, after rook e8 I go bishop b3 uh, f4 from black but I just swap off and go f3 and um, yeah I mean it's uh, it looks it's a little bit uncomfortable for black looks for white looks like but um, um, white does actually manage to uh, to survive this uh, uh, in the end so yeah I mean actually this move knight takes c3 does not achieve anything um, I mean, the other move that, that looked really, you know, very clear was knight e3. I'm stopping, even stopping the king from castling. I'm threatening knight c2, and I'm threatening queen d1 as well. Uh, the only problem is that white's got this cunning move f takes c3, which, uh, again, I'd spotted. And I thought that this was winning for uh, for white, most probably. It looks dangerous, but it looked like it, and, um, and indeed turned out to be true. I mean, the big problem for black is that bishop b6 again is threatened, and actually this king can't even uh, escape here because the queen is covering that diagonal so yeah you know it's just uh, really really bad so I in the end I came up with two ideas but you know I sort of thought yeah probably clear advantage but um, um, but nothing um, you know nothing so amazing um, I think knight f4 was my um, was my final uh, uh, choice um, and uh, after castles uh, the idea is that if knight d6 you can't take back with a queen on d6 you've got to take with a pawn and then um, I can play, um, apparently I've got various ideas, but this was the, the idea that I had, knight h5, and I've got threats like f4 and also h6 as well. So, you know, I thought that, because, uh, you know, the queen's actually rather in a rather lot of danger after queen h4, h6. If the knight moves, I'm going to have g5, and this queen is trapped. So, you know, I thought this was going to be pretty good. And if you go castles, I just go knight e2, and I'm, uh, you know, hitting this rook and this knight. Um, if you go rook e1, there's always this, another common trick to uh, to uh, to be aware of. Queen d1 checkmate. And if you go knight d6 check, I just take and take on f1, and this is just going to be really strong for me. Uh, after king f1, I go uh, um, h6, chase the knight away, take this pawn, and uh, bobs your uncle. So knight f4 was uh, was strong. I mean, actually, the engines just, uh, you know, they can bring themselves to, to ignore this mate on uh, on d1. And they just wanted to go h6, which, you know, is just really strong. Just chase the knight away, and then you'll take other material. And, uh, well, they thought best play was this. But, uh, yeah, okay, you know, white's just uh, going to be... Uh, black's just going to be a piece up. White's got three pawns for it, but, uh, you know, there's there's quite a lot of pressure against uh, these guys so uh, you know white's really suffering there the engines didn't uh, didn't last long as white so um yeah i mean that was uh, that was knight knight taking on e4 um amazing right i mean i had a, a gorgeous time uh, you know looking at that but the best move was castles and then this was again uh, i had a lovely time uh, you know looking through all these um, all these lines so um the first thing that you look at when you see this move castles, well, you know, why can't I just take on c5? You know, uh, this just looks huge, you know, and uh, I mean, this knight's uh, uh, in a bit of trouble. I've got stuff like bishop d6 and knight e5 coming in. This queen is short of squares. But actually, we've got knight d takes c4. Um, and again, you know, f takes c4, bishop d5 is the uh, key idea. But actually, there was a bit of a problem here. It took me rather a, a long time to, to understand because uh, bishop b6 was um not easy to uh, to refute here because you know i've got lots of hanging pieces here um and um you're just threatening h6 so it was a little bit hard to to work out you know how on earth am i going to uh, to develop here for example if i play a move like bishop f4 i just take take and go bishop c7 chase the queen away and then i'm just going to take on e4 um but what I uh, found, and uh, this turned out to be the best move, I was I was very pleased because it was a non a non standard uh, way of playing. It's just to take on d5, and then to play this move c4, which is actually uh, you're going to see again is a, a very common trick. Um, if you go queen c4, I go knight d6 check, um, and uh, if you go back to d7, I go c5, and then knight d6 check. And just you know the idea basically is that I'm just able to um, uh, to swap off queens. And get rid of that attack knight on e4 and then i'm just left with a a reasonable position here i mean black's uh, um got a little bit of an initiative but after this it's just completely equal so um bishop takes c5 gets you nowhere um it's not uh, bad for black um a little bit challenging i think for a white player to discover bishop d5 over the board but uh yeah you know not um, um not bad at all there um 
yeah, I, I would say, you know, I, I also had Bishop H5 as one of my candidate moves because, you know, this this idea of knight d takes e4 and bishop d5 is profoundly annoying. So, you know, it would be nice to play bishop h5, get the bishop out of the way, and then we're going to get in h6 and g5. Uh, actually, it's, you know, frying pan into the fire, really, because you can still go knight e4 and take on d5 because now you've got queen h3 forking these two guys. And after takes, check there, queen h5. You do have this pin h6, but you can just chase the queen away from, uh, uh, well, from the fifth rank, or actually just retreat, and this rook on h8 is pinned, and we're threatening knight f7 or knight e6. So it's just a completely winning position. So bishop h5, you get hit again. So what I was looking at um, even more was to play the move h5. And I like this idea very much, because I'm protecting this bishop on g4. Uh, I'm even just threatening h4 now, um, uh, just trapping the queen. So it looks really desperate. Um, H3. And now there were, you know, there were lots and lots of lines. Um, it was, um, you know, one idea that I really wanted to play was just bishop c5 and, you know, and sack this, uh, this bishop. Because I've got a nice idea. After hg, um, I'm not going to take on g4 simply. I'm going to play the move f4. Um, and when your queen moves to the h file, I'm going to play h takes g. And bishop c5 has defended this rook on h8. And uh, f4, I've managed to push the queen so that an um, attack on the h file comes with tempo. Um, now, the key thing is you've got these defenses like bishop d5, um, because after fg, you've got bishop e6. But uh, for example, in this case, I just take check and go e3, and I've got e2 coming in. Yeah, I mean, white's a piece up after bishop d7, rook d7, but I'm going to get lots of material back with e2 as as well as maybe mating black, who knows. So the key thing after this move f4 is you have to understand where do I want to sacrifice my queen. I mean, I'm pro most probably going to be able to get black's queen back with this idea, but where should I sacrifice the queen? And uh, not too surprisingly, it turns out to be h3, which is where you want to put it. Takes, and then bishop d5. And now, yeah, black's got a couple of possibilities. Obviously, queen d5, I just go queen g4, and then knight e4 and bishop f4. I mean, I'm just, uh, you know... All of Black's uh, pawns disappear like snow, and I'm left with absolutely nothing. And um, what I was hoping for, of course, was I could go rook h3, bishop e6, and then just um, uh, somehow double up on the h file. The big problem is that if I take with a queen uh, like that, then the rook on d8 is hanging, as well as the rook on h3. And um, if I go rook h5, takes king takes, when it looks like rook h8 is just going to happen, there's nothing you can do about it. Amazingly, white can play the move knight d takes e4, um, rook h8. I can take another piece with check, and then I can block h3. And um, takes, well, I, I thought at the very least bishop f4 was going to be better for uh, for white. I mean, um, uh, here, 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 and uh, at the very least I'm a pawn up, and, you know, maybe there's more in the position. So, um, yeah, what should black do in this position? Well, actually, um, g takes h3 was my main line. Bishop b6 takes, 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 king takes an f3. And, uh, you know, I thought that black should, um, the white would have to give back the piece for that. And I thought this is a type of position it felt like that the engines often managed to draw as black. And indeed, they were considering it to be virtually um, virtually equal. Um, so, uh, you know, plenty of counterplay on the, uh, the g and h lines against the... Uh, uh, the white king here and uh, this extra pawn is not so amazing so um yeah you know the engines were uh, were drawing that you know and uh, well that's quite uh, quite uh, quite interesting some uh, somehow there um yeah i mean i think that uh, actually the best move for white in this position was knight b3 which i think the engines thought was quite strong with white so um and knight d takes c4 is also um a pretty strong idea as well um, for example, takes, 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 and check here, you know, and, um, and you know, white manages to, uh, to sort of consolidate as well. Um, so bishop takes c5 wasn't the strongest, although it was a, a very tempting idea. Um, another idea that I was uh, looking at was uh, the move f4. Um, yeah, I mean, the bonus of this is that um, uh, e6 is covered again. 
So a lot of these tricks, you know, bishop d5 to e6 are not working. Just the problem that the, um, yeah, you know, the queen is, uh, uh, the problem is, that, sorry, that the, uh, although we're chasing the white queen, these pawns um, are very weak. So actually your attack's got to break through now because, yeah, otherwise you're completely, um, uh, you're losing absolutely everything. And um, actually, you know, um, uh, queen h2 looked weird, but because of these pawns are, uh, are falling apart, um, it actually worked out quite well. This was one uh, game, knight d6, takes, 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 e takes f4. That worked out very well for white. I also spent a little bit of time looking at moves like uh, queen h4, e3, h takes g4, bishop c5. That was the sort of attack that I wanted. But, um, you know, I was trying to break through, but um, actually when you put the engine on it, this is the sort of thing, you know, that they find, you know, really easily. And um, yeah, this just ended up uh, killing my attack completely. Queen c5 takes bishop b3 and g takes h5. And, uh, you know, basically I just wasn't really, uh, I just wasn't really making it with uh, with uh, this sort of kamikaze attack. Uh, the best line I, find, I found, by the way, was h4, queen h2. You know, we pushed the, the queen over to the side, bishop h5, and then knight b3 from white. Um, and I thought this was, you know, white was going to be sort of okay here. I mean, this queen on h2 is really odd. Um, but uh, this knight on b3 protects the pawn on c5, which uh, stops the, the, the bishop from coming to d6. And, uh, well, this bishop is active now, uh, so it's, and it's actually stopping black from playing f5 to f4. So, I mean, you know, rook e8 was, uh, was black's idea to play knight e5, and then we got some, uh, you know, just some interesting stuff here. Bishop d2 takes takes. And, uh, well, black feels better in this position a little bit. But, you know, uh, uh, after a move like c4, you start getting some control over the dark squares. And white turned out to be uh, to be fine. So um, that was uh, very exciting. Um, yeah. Um, also, you know, if you're looking at what the engines think was absolutely best, then they wanted to go f4 and then h6 in this way. Um, and after uh, bishop d5, hg takes e3 takes takes um actually stockfish and dragon agreed a draw in this position um very unclear to me but uh, um but yeah presumably the uh, you know the position's kind of uh, kind of balanced here but you can see um you know although uh, this move queen g3 you know is uh, uh, for white here then was um was definitely uh, decent and actually the only move as well um incredibly complicated and obviously you know with black you're, you're very very happy to play this sort of position Bishop d5 was played, queen d5, and now castles. And then, um, yeah, one of those amazing things where you sort of, a move that you would, just would play just naturally like that, the engine say, well, actually, that wasn't the most accurate move. What is the reason for that? Uh, well, f5 is the, what the engines wanted, and they thought that they were already at plus minus 2.5. Um, so, for example, queen g3, bishop e2, b4, and then h6, and... Uh, well, we'll come in with uh, um, uh, with g6 and bishop g7. Just get that together. And then uh, actually this knight on uh, g5 was uh, trapped and uh, Stockfish ended up sacrificing it for a pawn on e4, which is obviously not quite the idea. So f5 was, was really accurate, not giving black any chances um, at all. Uh, not giving white any chances, rather. Um, black played bishop c5, which I thought was, you know, tremendously natural. And uh, the only thing that I, I wondered about during the game was, you know, I spotted a tactic, but things went quickly. So uh, I didn't have time to uh, work it out. When I analysed later, I found that um, uh, that my idea was uh, not quite right. Because after I was looking at playing queen takes c4 in this position with the idea of queen g5, knight b3. I'm attacking the queen um, and I'm attacking the bishop. And of course, this queen needs to protect this bishop. So if I take that one, uh, this one might hang. Um, queen h5, knight takes c5. It's a lovely idea, but it doesn't work at all because after rook e8, queen f4, I go bishop e2. Actually, um, even more annoyingly, after queen c4 defending the knight, I go bishop e2 as well, and there's no way for the queen to defend that knight anymore. So whatever's happening, the best thing that white's got is that white's losing the exchange here. And, uh, well, you can swap off the rooks as well afterwards. You know, it's going to be quite, uh, quite nice for... Uh, for um uh for black should be winning in actual fact so queen takes e4 is not working and funny enough when i analyzed I, I spotted this idea but then i thought ah yeah come on well you know won't work why should it work 
And then, of course, the engine pointed out that it does work. Because you don't take on e4. You don't go queen f4 like in the game. You play the move queen g3. Now, what I analysed was queen g5 and then knight takes e4. Um, and I found a gorgeous idea here. Um, the point is, if you play a move like queen h5, um, or queen f5 actually, take some bishop e2, it looks like we've got the same scenario, right? I defend this, uh, have to defend this knight, and then you take on f1, and then that's it. But I actually spotted this uh, this gorgeous idea, queen g5, um, which, um, uh, so if you go bishop f1, I go queen takes h5, that's the point. Obviously, I'm covering the uh, um, my knight on c5 in this way. And if you take, I'm attacking the rook on d8. Um, but you say rook d5. This is just going to win some material, right? I'm attacking one, two pieces, and also the rook as well. But I play this move rook e1, and now it's really cool because uh, um, black's got two... Uh, possibilities of taking pieces and still being attacking a piece after it but he can't actually win anything if i go rook c5 i go bishop e3 and then you can't defend this bishop on e2 and if you go rook takes g5 i go knight e4 and i'm attacking this one and you can't defend this piece uh, really cool i've never seen a, a tactic like that before and i spotted it without engine help which was really 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 nice but the problem was was that after knight e4 uh, black plays queen d5. Um, I can't go queen g4 because f5 curses and damnations forks these two. Um, and after knight c5, bishop e2, yeah, the queen's protected, so queen g5 has no impact. And I honestly, I did stop for, for just, you know, like five seconds and thought, oh, I could even go knight b3, I suppose. But I thought, well, yeah, you know, not taking a knight, a pawn on e4, you know, it's not going to be better, is it, to not take a pawn on e4. But actually, this works beautifully because uh, after I go knight b3, um, I mean, if you play queen d5 now, uh, I just take the, the bishop on g4 and f5. Well, you know, I haven't won a pawn back uh, or anything, but, uh, um, you know, I'm not getting forked in this position. And if you go queen h5, well, I've got my knight c5, bishop e2, queen g5 again. And the fact that there's a pawn on e4 makes absolutely no difference to the tactics. Um, you know, uh, my engines were saying takes, takes, takes was the best uh, idea. But I mean, actually, um, uh, black's not a pawn up and uh, got a little bit more space, but it's just completely equal. Um, just something like uh, bishop e3 at some stage and, uh, and you're great. So... Actually, in this position, um, after this move, bishop c5, queen g3 um, was completely possible when white's basically almost equalizing. White played queen f4, however, f5, and now this is this is way, way worse uh, for white. I mean, this queen is quite badly placed on um, on f4. It you know, means that the bishop can't, uh, uh, can't get out there for, for one thing. Um, so, um, uh, and here blacks, you know, in, in big control, but it wasn't the end of the, um, of the whole, uh, of the whole thing because, um, <coughs> there was still one, one interesting moment. Um, again, we can take on e4, you know, we can still take on e4 like this because, uh, after f takes e4, we've got queen g4, but actually black can just do what he wants, actually, uh, what she wants rather. Um, bishop b6, uh, is, um, is one idea. Um, and you go uh, something like c4 uh, because, you know, where are you going to put your knight? Uh, and I go queen d3 with a lovely dual threat, actually. A threat of queen takes f1 uh, check here, followed by rook d1 checkmate. So you go knight c3, rook e8, queen g3, h6. And actually, you know, we're not going for anything amazing. We're just going for total suffocation. And, uh, well, yeah, this was just uh, just horrific for um, for white and the engines won it very very quickly afterwards and uh, to be honest um, uh, the engines is something slightly different this was dragon's way of playing it stockfish went bishop e7 in this position and then just ended up doing the same you know h6 g5 basically you know white can survive in terms of material but um, in terms of mobility of the pieces yeah it's just getting uh, completely squeezed so yeah, you know, this is looking quite lost now. But, uh, well, white played knight takes e4. And black played bishop b7 quite quickly. And, um, you know, I, I was thinking, you know, bishop b6 seemed uh, more natural to me. Um, you know, you're sort of keeping the bishop pointing at the king like this. And uh, the bishop can come to c7. But, you know, you know, and this is the engine move as well. You know, after knight g3, we'll do something very similar to the game. And, uh, you know, just, uh, well, this was the, uh, 
this was the best that uh, that uh, uh, that Stockfish could come up with as white. So you can see it's uh, it's pretty terrible. So you know, I thought Bishop B six was more natural, but Bishop B seven, you know, looked very very good to me as well. You know, I assumed that this was just uh, brilliant as well. And after Knight G three, we just got G five, which is what happened in the game. But uh, after Bishop B seven, the engines dropped to you know to to uh, almost equality again. It's amazing, you know, it really is amazing. Just looking at games with engines, it gives you you know such different insights. Um, why was that? Well, actually, what White has a possibility to do is not Knight G three, but to play F three, Bishop H five, and Knight G three, and uh, we're attacking this bishop on H five and the pawn on F five, which means that the bishop has to go to G six. And basically, you know, what you've achieved with this. You've managed to stop black from getting the kingside pawns moving, which just means that black's play is going to be a lot, lot slower. So, you know, white gets the opportunity to play knight b3, bring the bishop out to d2. And, well, I mean, you know, white's a pawn up, black's got the two bishops, but the pieces aren't getting squeezed at all. You know, these knights, they're not, you know, they're never great on g3 and b3, but then, you know, they've got some sort of potential. You know, this knight could move around to uh, e2, d4. And, of course, where the knight is as well, it's tying down that bishop on g6, to the pawn on f5. So yeah, just this simple move f3 and knight g3 and actually white was just equal all of a sudden. And um, you know, why does that make a difference between bishop b7 and bishop b6? Bishop b6 just stops white of course from uh, from playing f3. Um, amazing these subtleties, isn't it? It's really, uh, you know, and uh, again, just, you know, watching the game, just, uh, you know, uh, looking at it whilst I was doing other things at the time, you know, just uh, did not ring a bell with me at all you know and, uh, only when i saw the engine games after that i thought wow you know that was that was a moment really still for white but after knight g3 i liked very much how black finished so g5 and now h5 this was a really good move and uh, i would say uh, i'd tooted on mastodon um uh, on this and uh, said h5 is the move and uh, yeah black certainly played it queen d7 f3 um h4 um, yeah, I, I'd, uh, I'd actually, I thought that um, that you could maybe be even quicker. Don't even have to worry about this piece because, uh, you know, if you get to open the H file, uh, the piece is coming over. This is going to be massive. But, you know, Black played it just um, in a very simple way. Bishop H5. I mean, to be honest, yeah, you, you know, you can calculate and start uh, giving away uh, pieces. On the other hand, you could just play simply and keep all your advantages. And that's exactly what Black did. So, um, uh, yeah. Yeah, what can white do? I mean, h3 is um, is the best line to stop black from playing h3 uh, herself. But um, after queen b5, uh, that was white, what white played, a6, queen a4. Now, white's quite ingenious, actually. White's looking to try and get some sort of dark squares on the queen side to uh, to play around with. But, uh, well, now it was time for the light squares on the uh, on the king side. And, um, yeah, I know um uh jamal fi finished this absolutely beautifully so uh, i mean look at the contrast in position you know uh, all of black's pieces you know just uh, um just pointing towards the white position beautifully mobilized huge space advantage and then you know look at those uh, uh white pieces you know with uh, a number of them still on their original squares you know it's just amazing Knight g1 played. Um, yeah, I was expecting bishop takes g1 and uh, rook e2. That was my uh, suggestion. But um, um, black played uh, a very nice move, um, which um, uh, I'm sure she enjoyed. It was uh, g4. Um, just you just you know basically battering battering away at these light squares now, um, and uh, with the king caught in the corner like this, you know if you ever play a move like f4, then this bishop's coming round to d5, or the queen's coming to d5, and this poor king here is just uh, you know completely uh, completely lost here. So uh, g4 was played. I like this move very much. Knight b3, and now black took on g1 and went rook e2. And uh, yeah, I mean, if uh, nothing else is happening, we're just going to go queen d3 to c2 and just uh, line up on the seventh rank. That's what happened after bishop g5, ignoring the uh, the rook. If you took on d8, well, I can do all sorts of things, but uh, I can just play a rook takes h2 check to be brilliant. If you want, king h1, queen g2. Um, if you don't take the rook, you can go king g1, but then I just go queen e2 anyway and uh, give mate. Um, so that's very nice. Um, 
played rookie one and uh, I tweeted that um, rookie two and uh, uh, queen c2 was the uh, was the simplest and then realized that actually uh, um, there was something even simpler which is what uh, Ovista Dieva played it was just taking on e1 and then queen f3 and there's no way to stop uh, queen g2 so there we are. Wow, that was quite a long video. Uh, I, I do apologize for that. But, you know, there was masses and masses of content to it. I mean, I love the way that Black played. Um, I really thought that this was a, um, a wonderful game full of, um, uh, full of energy, you know. And, uh, um, um, yeah, you know, this move F5. And then afterwards, the way that was finished with H5 really played with, you know, massive purpose here. It was really, really nice. Um, but, you know, I, I also found all the engine discoveries in the opening, um, all the subtleties, you know, subtleties which you just could not imagine, really. You know, um, uh, that knight d5 might not be the best move, you know, queen g3 here and all the tactics in there, and that, you know, for example, bishop takes c5 here um, is inaccurate and that f5 was required and why. You know, it's just really uh, um, quite amazing, you know, and it's, you only discover this with the engines. And, um, you know, some people say that, uh, you know, that uh, engines are ruining chess by uh, seeing so much. Um, yeah, I, I, I really don't share that opinion because, you know, my opinion is, is that I'm discovering things that, frankly, would have been uh, close to me and unknown to me for uh, uh, forever if I, uh, if I hadn't analyzed them with engines. And, uh, you know, I'm pretty sure that, uh, that every time you, uh, you do it seriously, you know, play lots of engine matches, go through things, have more ideas, play some more engine matches, put all that information together. You know, you 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 you're just uh, you know gaining knowledge that's uh, that's just you know like uh, um, yeah I don't know 500 elo more than you could ever find in uh, in any book except the Silicon Road to Chess Improvement of course. So um, yeah, you know I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you're enjoying this series of uh, you know going through human games very seriously and um, and you know looking at it with engines and really trying to understand what engines can teach us. Um, and I hope you, you enjoy this game by uh, these two, uh, um, you know, little known female players. And um, you no, know, just goes to show something which I, you know, fervently believe that, um, uh, you know, there is enormous quality and, uh, and uh, creativity and joy to be found in chess, you know, at, at, um, um, at all sorts of, uh, uh, of different levels, you know, the elite level, but also just, a, you know, a normal international open like this. Um, and uh, you know it's just a question of being open for it uh, that uh, that gives you the initial uh, enthusiasm for it and then working with the engines it just shows you know how much amazing content there was in the games so um, so there we are I hope you enjoyed that if you like the video why not give a like um, or subscribe to the channel or take a look at my course my chessable course and book uh, the Silicon Road to Chess Improvement, which is all about engine games and all about how to use your engines, as I do in all these videos, to improve your chess. I mean, I really think, uh, I truly believe that, you know, if, um, uh, that if you read it and, uh, and uh, you know, apply some of the techniques I talk about, uh, that you'll really, really improve your chess. So that would be a perfect uh, gift for Christmas, wouldn't it? But anyway, thanks very much for having watched this video and uh, hopefully see you at the next one. Thanks for watching.